Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. And today we're going to be sharing an exciting new addition to the Neon CLI. And I'm here with David who worked on this feature. So now I'll hand it over to you, David. Introduce yourself and tell us more about what we're gonna talk about today. Yeah, I wanna show everyone a new CLI command we've introduced in the Neon CLI. Um, so I've only been at Neon for a couple of months now, but I've been having fun with this, um, in, let's say new feature um, in our CLI. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to, to show everyone what I've been working on for the last basically three weeks. Let's do it. Yeah, so let me share my screen and uh, I'll walk you through the CLI. So if you're unfamiliar with the Neon Cuddle CLI, um, it's something we've had for a while now, which can be used to basically manage all of your Neon operations. So uh, you can list your projects, uh, your branches, you can create new database branches, uh, you can list your databases, you can manage roles, um, and perhaps most importantly, you can get connection strings to any uh, endpoint on any project on any branch. Um, so let's start by just showing um, how the CLI sort of works. So I can run Neon Cuddle projects list um, and I get all of my projects. I can then run you know, databases list and specify a project ID. And that'll show me like all of the databases um, that are available in a specific project. Um, it's very powerful and most of our customers are using it today as part of their CI CD workflows. So it's very useful to create branches uh, for preview environments or to create databases for running tests and then dropping those databases and deleting those branches. Um, it's open source, obviously, so you can check it out on GitHub. I think it's uh, github.com slash neon database slash neon CTL. Um, and yeah, I've been working on this new command. You wanna see it, Rambu? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. So the new command is called create app. So it is effectively an application bootstrap uh, command. And when you run it, it starts by asking you um, what you wanna name your app. So I'm gonna go YouTube demo. And then it asks you to choose a package manager. So I'm gonna go with bun because I, I really like bun, it's really fast. Um, and then it asks you what framework you'd like to use. So eventually we're gonna have Ruby on Rails, Python on Django, fast HTML, um, anything that's, 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 um, that, that we can make available. Uh, so I'm gonna just go with Next.js and then I can choose an ORM. So um, we support both Drizzle and Prisma. Uh, I'm gonna go with Drizzle for this demo. And then you can choose if you want an unauthenticated app. So it's just a very simple application with no auth, or you can choose a specific authentication provider. In this case, I'm gonna go with Auth.js, but again, in the future, we want to have different auth providers here, like Clark or Okta, or sorry, Auth0, um, any auth provider that we can add support for. Once you do that, you can now choose a Neon project. So, um, you can connect your app to an existing Neon project, um, or you can create a new Neon project on the fly, which is actually what I'm gonna do here for the purposes of the demo. And then you can tell that it just created a project with um, the name of my apps uh, dash project. And then it immediately afterwards created a branch and it's called dev dash, um, a little hash. So it created a development branch for me to work on this app. That was very quick because it's Bun and Bun is really fast. Um, and so now I can choose if I want to deploy this app somewhere like Vercel or Cloudflare, we support both, or I can skip this step and deploy later. Um, so I'm gonna go with Vercel here and it creates a production branch for my app um, on the fly. And then it takes me to the Vercel CLI where I can um, deploy this app into um, any 
existing Vercel app, or I can create a Vercel uh, project on the fly. So here I'm going to go with an existing project that I already have. It's called my app, um, but I could just as easily create a new Vercel project on the fly. Uh, this takes a little while longer. So while that's going on, maybe we can look at what was scaffolded or generated for me. So we're going to pop open VS Code and we're going to take a look at what was done here. So we've got our app here. We've got our um, you know, main application file. And we're going to maybe take a look at some of this stuff later. Um, and then we've got, most importantly, our schema. So if I search for schema, we can take a look at the different tables. Um, let me zoom out a little bit here. Uh, different tables that were created. Uh, so we've got a users table. We've got an account table. Password stable, session stable, and verification tokens and authenticator stable. These are all part of the AuthJS uh, framework. They're not all required, but we create all of them just in case. And we've actually gone ahead and applied some migrations. Um, so we've applied this init DB SQL migration to both the dev branch and the production branch. And we've actually set up like an M file, dot .m file with um, all the environment variables that, that I need in order to run my app locally. So we can start by doing that. So we can run run, run dev um, and we can, uh, let me just uh, pop open Chrome here. So essentially, this Go ahead, up yeah. a Next.js app with Drizzle. So you have the ORM and auth, mm -hmm. creates the tables, generates secrets, includes all of the connection string in a .m file, and makes sure that the app is ready to be deployed to either Vercel or Cloudflare for now, right? Yes, precisely. Right. And again, right. for, for the deployment options, we want to add Fly, IO, Railway, uh, Render, and other uh, deployment options as well. Yeah, makes sense. And like in a way, so I know that AuthJS is actually uh, compatible with different database providers and different ORMs. So all of this mm -hmm. was already configured, right? Like you don't have to write all of the necessary scaffolding code for AuthJS and it's just, it's there, right? Yeah, so AuthJS is, is amazing. It, it supports um, a number of different databases as well as a number of different ORMs or just no RM if you don't want to use an RM. Um, and that's why it, it, our template just has like a very simple Drizzle adapter in when you choose Drizzle or a very simple Prisma adapter when you choose Prisma. Makes sense, awesome. So now the app is running, right? And there is- Yeah, so this is, this is the local host version of the app. So I'm gonna create an account here. Um, I'm gonna go with my name and my email and a very secret password. I'm gonna sign up and then immediately proceed to sign in. Okay, so now I'm signed in. That's all the app does. So it's a very, very simple template. The idea is that you can go and build whatever you want um, and we don't want the template that we're shipping uh, to be too large or, or bloated even. We want it to be very simple and, and expandable. Awesome. So like right now, if I want to build my own thing, I just essentially modify the code that's I'm assuming in the page.tsx file. Um, and then I just build my app and UI, right? Yeah. The main work we're doing for you is setting up the neon branches for dev and prod as well as applying migrations, running migrations, and setting it up so that you can deploy your app to these different providers. So deploying to Vercel, deploying to Cloudflare. Honestly, it's one of those things that could be a, a bit easier. Um, uh, not all providers are, are as easy, obviously, but um, we want to do that work for you again. So it's, it's less work for, for someone wanting to start up. Makes sense. This is awesome. So yeah, tell us more, like why did we want to add this new command and kind of like, what's the big vision for it? 
Awesome. So before we, before we go there, I just want to show that my basically production version of the app has also been deployed. Yeah. So obviously it's running on Vercel. And because it's connected to a different Neon branch, I can actually sign up with, you know, the same email and I'm, I'm not going to have like a duplicate username uh, problem because it's two different Neon branches that we've got here. And I also want to show you the Neon console. Uh, so this is my Neon project that was created for me. And if I go to branches here, there's two different branches. They're actually both active right now, um, but they have the same schema. So if I click on tables, I can see uh, that for this YouTube demo project, I've got, um, I've got the AuthJS schema here. So I can look at my users and my passwords and other things. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, because now you have two branches. So at the top, you have the main branch selected <laughs> and you can switch to the dev branch. And mm -hmm. I mean, they will have the same email because you use the same email. But I did, yeah. They are uh, actually different. Um, yeah, different user IDs. Yeah, correct. Much. All right. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. Okay, so now we can go back to your other question, which was like, what is our vision for this? Um, there's a lot of application scaffolding tools out there. And there's an ever-growing number of GitHub repos that you can get clone and just get started with. And I think that's awesome. There's some amazing templates out there that come with like a database and a front end and a back end and like a Stripe integration and logging and monitoring and all of those things. And those are all great. So why did we build our own? So the reason why we've gone ahead and built our own is because we want to show everyone our opinion or our opinionated way of using Neon for your applications backend. And this opinionated way basically involves branching, right? Which is one of Neon's superpowers. Um, so that you can work on your, um, on your app in a much more graceful way. So what does that mean? It means you can test migrations in dev, in staging, in prod very easily. If you want to experiment with adding a new index for performance, you should do that in a safe way, in a separate branch that is not production before you actually roll that change out to production. Um, and that was the primary reason why we decided to build this, this CLI command, um, was to show people what it's like to build an application with neon, um, in, in like the neon way in the future, as we augment the platform and add more features to neon, um, all of those features, we're going to find a way to showcase them as part of this um, generated app. So in the future, we could have multiple templates showcasing things like PG vector, um, or our auto scaling. Um, and the idea is that you have a very easy way of trying out new neon features. We can just add them to this template. People can upgrade their CLI version, build a new app from scratch and immediately very quickly try new neon features features. So that's, that's the, this is the base, right? What we've done so far is nothing extraordinary. Um, it's just another application bootstrapper, but as neon, the platform matures, and as we add more features, we're going to make as many of them available as possible in the generated, um, application. Um, and that the idea is just to have this very easy way of showing people how to use Neon and what the, the best Neon features are. Makes sense. Yeah. I, uh, I really like this because now you don't like, it kind of reduces the learning curve a lot because now everything is set up for you and pretty much now you can, because the thing is branches, they are a new concept. <laughs> so yes. now they are kind of like set up for you, created for you. And once you see the end result, now you understand, okay, that makes sense because a branch really ultimately you can think of it as 
an isolated database that you can use in your workflow, whether that's local dev, CI, or you know, their production. Uh, and how you go from development to preview to production, well, all of this is really set up for you uh, in the CLI, just makes yeah. that easier. Ideally, and this is one of our next steps, when you choose something like Vercel or Cloudflare, we set, we set things up such that for each um, deployment that you do, you get your own branch. That's something that's super, super special about Neon. Branches are very fast to create and very cheap. So we actually have a really high limit in terms of the number of branches you can create compared to other database providers. Because of our decoupling of storage and compute, the cost of creating a new branch is very, very low for us. So our opinionated way of using branches is that you should have a branch for each pull request that you do in your app for each preview environment. It should be its own branch. Other providers are not as good at this um, because creating a branch takes time or just costs them a lot of money to keep that branch around, um, but not in Neon. So ideally in the future, the generative application template has that by default, such that for each preview environment that you um, deployed for sale, for instance, you get your own individual branch. Awesome, yeah, well, Thank you so much for showing us this command. And yeah, if you definitely try it out, let us know your feedback. If you have any thoughts, ideas, you can join the Neon Discord community where you can ask us question, uh, questions and just ping us directly. So yeah, thank you, David, for <laughs> joining us today. And thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next one.